Welcome to this video. My name is Rajveer, founder of Code and Compile. And in this video, we're going to talk about snap signal from banner engineering. This is a very interesting concept for those industries and for those processes in which you want to fetch the data from the factory and send it to the cloud. If you see my diagram here, you can see that we have a bunch of sensors on the bottom layer. We have discrete, analog, IO link, current transformer. And then we are fetching the signal from the sensor and giving to an industrial controller which is further sending the data to the cloud. Now the question is, there are different sensors on the shop floor, some which are IO-Link enabled, some which are not. But we need to convert those signals into IO-Link or Modbus so that they are compatible with other communication that works in our networks. And then further on, we can send the data to the cloud. So here you can see two examples. One is that the data is converted from discrete or analog sensors to IO-Link. This part we will cover later in the videos, not in this video. So you can subscribe now so you can have update about the future videos as well. In this video, we will talk specifically about reading the data from other sensors like current transformer, discrete sensor, analog, and converting that to Modbus and then sending to the cloud, which is also possible for those industries which are not equipped with IO-Link sensors, where you can just install the sensor, fetch the data, and send it to the cloud, making them easy to connect to the IoT world. All right, so if you see, I have a banner kit on my table where you can visualize various sensors, which I highlighted on my diagram. So we have a laser sensor, we have a strip light, we have wireless transmitter and receiver, and this is our industrial controller. This is our current to Modbus converter. And then we have temperature humidity sensor. And here we have a display to, to show the temperature and humidity. And there we have a current transformer, vibration sensor, and some T connectors. We will look into that in detail. So first of all, what is a snap signal? What is the concept? The concept of snap signal is to capture the data from the shop floor, from the sensor in virtually any form, and then to convert the data, to convert the data into a meaningful standard protocol so that it's easily distributable to the cloud. All right, so we capture the data, convert it, send it to the cloud. We distribute that. And we're gonna do several examples in this video. So I'm gonna show you how we can capture the data of four to 20 million pairs and we convert that into Modbus and send it to the cloud very easily in this video. We have several examples. So let's begin with one example of an industry. So where we have an industrial process, and in this process, you can use several sensors, which we have on the kit for motor vibration, temperature, current, hydraulic pressure, or the production count. So we're not gonna mess up with the current PLC program. We're gonna add these sensors, which will take the data up and then send it to the cloud for further analytics to make important decisions about your process. So this is the idea or the concept of this video that how you can use the sensors, convert the signal, raw signal into Modbus and easily send it to the cloud. So what we're gonna do in this video, first I'm gonna introduce you my kit. So I have my wireless transmitter and receiver. So wireless transmitter is transmitting the data from my vibration sensor, current transformer, and wireless receiver is receiving this data and sending it to one of the port of my industrial controller. So this is on my kit, so this is the port which is connected to my wireless receiver, and this is my wireless transmitter. Both devices are actually same, but just by changing the dip, dip switches, you can change the functions. And then you have one port which is free, and the next two ports are connected to one of my laser sensors, strip light, and the next one to pro touch and temperature humidity sensor. So we have several sensors, and using this M12 splitter and M12T, you can split your signals and have multiple devices connected to the same port. So this will scale up your, scale up the usage of your sensor into one controller. All right, so if you wanna see the wiring layout, it is like that. Oops, let me go back. So in this layout, you have 24 volt, which is connected to this part of my network where I have current transformer. So you can see that one port is connected to the sensor, one port is power, Giving, getting the power, and this power is distributed to other devices. And here we have vibration and temperature sensor using M12T, and here we have wireless transmitter. And then wireless receiver receiving the data into the port four of my controller. Port three is not used, and port two is connected to M12 splitter, which is having a very interesting device, mod 422 Modbus converter. So this device is converting the raw data from the laser sensor, which is in the range of four to 20 million pair 
into a Modbus data, which you can easily read in the controller and send it to the cloud. That's the best part of this video that you have several devices to convert the data and how we can easily send it to the cloud. I'm going to show you very quickly. And then you have M12 splitter also giving an output to a strip line. So you can also connect an output devices. And then you have M12T connector connected to temperature and humidity sensor giving the sensor signal and it's going to a pro touch. So if you see my pro touch here, you have a temperature value and the humidity is shown by animation of this blue light. So I'm going to show you this value as well. So this wiring layout, you can understand this is on my kit as well. So let's begin with our first example really quick. I'm going to show you how we can connect a sensor output to a controller. So you can see that my connection is actually already done on my kit just to save time. It's basically nothing but the value from the sensor is going to my 420 to Modbus converter. So the range of output is 4 to 20 milliampere based on the tank level. So let's imagine this sensor is connected on a tank here. I just can use it my hand to get the signal, but just for imagination. So based on the level of tank, I will get the current and I'm going to connect this signal to my Modbus converter and then to my controller. So the wiring part is already done. Let's see how we can read the sensor signal into our controller. So for that, we are using a software called DXM configuration software. Very easy to use. I'm going to show you now. First thing is you have to done the wiring, which we already did in my trainer. We know that it's port two and device ID is one. This I know that. So let's find the controller first. So my controller has a specific IP address. I'm going to scan the network and see where my controller is located. So it should be visible here. Here I have my controller and I will select that one and click on connect. Now this should connect my controller. So this connection you can see by this green dot here, controller is connected. So make sure you know the IP address and this is in your network. Now what I can do is I can go to tools and I know that my remote device is, this is my remote device, my sensor, and this is connected at port number two. Address is one and my starting address to read the value is one. And how do I know these addresses? You have to read the manual because in the manuals, it defines that it's reading the sensor value of 4 to 20 milliampere and storing the value in the register 1. And this maybe I can show you, I have this analog. So here you can see that analog data output. It's a holding register 1 where I'm going to read the value. All right. So this is defined actually in the manual. So let's go back here and see if I read the register 1. And if I read 1, you can see that it's showing 4000. This is like no value. So if I put my hand here and if I again read it, you will see the value changes. So I'm getting the value from 4000 to 20,000, a raw value. All right. So now what I need to do is this is just for testing. I need to store this value into the controller somewhere. So what I can do is I can see I have an RTU read command. I can say add read rule and I can type here laser sensor. Port is my two from slave ID one, read one, resistor starting in one, everything is fine. And I want to store that into 201. This 201 is the resistor in my controller. All right. And let's bring it a little bit up so that we have port one, two, four, and four. So that's it. And here, what I can do, very important part, the frequency of reading here, it's by default one second. I want to read it every 10 second, 10 milliseconds. So I will put here like this and very easily you can save it and you can send configuration to DXM. If you do that, it will, it will save this configuration into my controller. And now I can read the value in my Modbus register, which is starting at, if I go to my local register and here I can type 201. And if I read it here, I should be getting my raw value. So it is trying to read it. So now you can see that 4,000 it's coming. Now, if I put my hand there again, and if I read the value is coming. So I'm, I have saved the value from a sensor into my controller, but the thing is I have to scale it as well. So if you see my example, in my example, I have the value from 4,000 to 20,000. This should be converted to the tank level, which is 75 to zero in inverse, because if the sensor is getting less value, it means tank level is increasing. If sensor is getting uh, more value, it means tank level is decreasing. So it's inverse. So the range is 
from 4,000 to 20,000 to 75 and 0. But to make this scaling easy, I can also put the offset in my sensor. This will make it programming very easy. So what I can do is I can go back to my register mapping. And here I can also put an offset of minus 4,000. By doing that, my range changes from 4,000 to 20,000 to 0 to 16,000. Super easy. So minus 4,000, I have put the offset. I can save the configuration and let's send it to my controller again. And now once doing that, if I come back again and check my range to 201, so once it's finished downloading, if I read it and here I should see the range now zero. So here the value should be zero in a couple of seconds, which was 4,000 before. And now once the controller is ready, because when you send the configuration controller needs some time to initialize, now you can see that the value is zero. So we have scaled the value. And further on, if you see the scaling logic here, I have defined a scaling logic, but this I have already implemented, save the time. So if you see in our controller, it's quite easy to add math rules. So you have an action rule here, you can define multiplication, division, and you know that in scaling you have to do a lot of multiplication. So here, you notice that I have already done that. So I have my register 201, and this is here. This is multiplied by numerator and then divided by denominator and then result is stored in 209. So 209 is the result of my tank. So let's notice that, let's monitor that. I will monitor here 10 register. I will enable the polling. And now here you can see that raw value is zero and 209 means 75 centimeter tank is full. I bring my hand here and you can see that now the value is 37, 40, 42. And as I go back, the value is decreasing to zero. Super easy, doing the scaling, you can do whatever you like. Now you have this value 209, which you can read via Modbus, or you can send it to the cloud, because now you have your tank level. So let's make this exercise a little bit more interesting by adding another device to it, which is my strip light. So strip light is connected on the tank so that the user can visually see what is the level of the tank. In this case, strip light is my output device, so we have to do Modbus right in this case. So here I have already done the scaling of the strip light. So if you see my example, I have here local register in use. I have somewhere light output 203. So this has been already scaled. So if you monitor here, 203 is right now 100. As I bring my hand here, the level is decreasing. And if I begin the polling, this will reduce as well, 54. Now this is the level is full, so it's going to be 100. If the level is less, it's going to be decreasing. So the light value is already coming. All we have to do is send this resistor to the light. In this case, I will again go to resistor mapping. Now I will go to RTU write. All right, simply add another rule. Here I will write light output. Perfect, it's port number two. I'm gonna write one resistor. The resistor which I'm gonna write is I think 203. I need to check again. Local, yeah, 203 is perfect. To slave ID is two, so this is ID two in port two. And address of the slide is 2001. How do I know that? This is again given in the manual. If I show you the light manual, this 2001 is the address to show the level of the light. And this light is, light is pre-configured with different colors so that when the color is uh, it's decreasing, it's gonna show red. If it's in the middle, it will show orange. If it's full, it will show green. So that's it. I have defined my light output, port two, and it will move the value 203, which is already scaled. Let's save that and send the configuration to the DXM. By sending the configuration, I will open this again. And now you will see based on the level of tank or based on the signal from my sensor, the light should be coming. Let's see a couple of seconds here. You can see that how quickly the light is changing based on my finger. All right, so this is showing you the level of the tank. So if the tank level is 100%, the light will show more. If the tank level is decreasing, decreasing, you can see that the color changes to orange. This is pre-configured in the strip light. You can reprogram that also using the same software. And if I go less, you can see that it's blinking. The blinking method is also defined in the strip light. So the strip light is very interesting, very intelligent device where you can reprogram that. And all this configuration, which we have done so far, the interesting part is it's saved in XML file. Where do we use this file? Come, I will come to that. 
So this example, we have seen how we can quickly scale the data from the sensor, send it to the light. Let's come to example three. Now we want to read this data on the node red. Also very easy. In this case, what we can do is, now node red is my favorite software to visualize the information on the dashboard. I've already defined here, my laser light signal is coming at 202. And I just need to enable that. Let's done it and enable this as well and enable my gauge. So I'm just enabling my flow, which I've already defined. So basically I'm reading my Modbus. In Modbus, I have mentioned the IP address of my DXM controller. Port address is 402 and address is 202, which I was reading here. So if you remember 202 is my light output. So this is my light output and my tank output was 209. Basically, I have to read my tank output. So oh, there should be 208 because it's zero base addressing. Sorry about that. This 208 is coming here and I deploy. And now here you can see that tank level is coming, 75 centimeter, it's full. And I bring my finger just to have different invariations. So now you can see that the laser sensor measurement is 54 or 47. And this you can also read on the sensor, it's the same. And the tank level is changing as my finger is moving. Okay, makes it really interesting. Very quickly, you can see the data on the dashboard and you can see other data like humidity, temperature, velocity, and this peak resolution. This information is coming from the vibration sensor, which is here. So if I move this vibration sensor or just peak it a little bit, you can see that the peaks is changing. So the vibration sensor is sensing the data via this wireless transmitter and receiver is receiving it here. And then via ethernet, modbus CCP IP, I'm reading on my dashboard, super interesting fraction of seconds. All right, this was about example three, how you can read the data on the node red dashboard. Last example, also very interesting, how you can read the data on the banner cloud using HTTP cloud push. This feature is also available in DXM controller. You can directly send the data from the controller to the cloud, also using the same amazing software, which is DXM. Let's open that one here. So in this software, you can see that I have defined a register 203. This is my light output, which is defined. And here you can see that it has a cloud setting, which is read. So we can read this register. We can define which variables you want to read on the cloud. And how this cloud has been configured, you can go to your settings and cloud services. And here you can see there are two methods, push method for HTTP cloud and AWS IoT cores. I'm using HTTP cloud push, and this is my server IP, my page. And this is the unique ID that you need to have, which so when you set up the account on the cloud, you will get this unique ID. You can put it in your controller and then you can define which register you want to read. So this you can change from here. For example, I can also show you the vibration values, which are coming in different registers. So here, for example, it's humidity and this is temperature. This is also being read here. And if I go down, I'm reading the vibration sensor values in these registers. These are also in read mode. You can also write it, but here it's just an example for reading the mode. So we are reading this value. So I have already sent this configuration to my controller. So I will just save it or maybe let's save as, okay, it's saved as banner underscore V8. All I need to do is now go to the banner website, bannercds.com and make sure you have this account already. You can contact banner for setting up an account for you. And here I have already set up some gauges for humidity and these are the velocity and acceleration data coming from my sensor. That's the temperature sensor value coming from my temperature sensor. And here you can see that I can refresh this data every minute manually or every minute. Okay, so this is the current data coming, I think every last hour. So if I click on my humidity, I can also see my history. All right, so it's very intuitive dashboard. You can have, you can click any gauges here and you can have data in detail. So let's bring the data of our tank level, which we want to display here. In this case, all I have to do is first, I have to make sure I go to my device management and I have to update my XML file. So this XML file, which I saved is banner underscore VA.XML. This I want to update it here so I can select my file from my computer. This is here and update and override click save this will help me to get the variables really quick so let's let me show you now we go to dashboard now now in my dashboard i can click add new dashboard or item so well here i already have a dashboard so i can go inside and now you will see here unlock dashboard now add new dashboard item in this case i will click here 
I will put a dashboard or item name, let's say tank level. And I need a simple, maybe not a graph, but a gauge. So gauge, I need a clean gauge. So you have different gauges you can select. Gateway is my banner snap demo. This will come because I've already defined a gateway in my dashboard. And register, now it will see you have a register of light output and this is the tank, result three. If you remember result three, this is coming for 209. This was my tank register, result three, and immediately you will see here the value is coming 75. Maximum, let's see, I can give 80. So this is my tank level. This is my ranges, click save. Here is my tiny gauge, you can bring it here, drag and drop, super easy, bring it more. And now this is reading your data every one minute. I can set auto refresh every one minute. It will read the data and it's also pushing the data every one minute. So if you notice in the cloud settings, I have cloud push interval of one second, one minute, okay? So every one minute it will change the data. So now if I bring my finger in front of the sensor, so every one minute it's this value should be updated. So I will just wait one minute. Now you can see that the value is 45. So the next minute the value will be updated. So that's how you can play around with your signals and display it on your dashboard really quickly using Banner CDS and this amazing controller DXM. Okay, next go back, D D sorry, DMX R90. <laughs> All right, this was the example four. So just to sum up, what we did was we were first connecting our DXM controller to DXM software. We are setting up the local register. So we were capturing the data from our sensors, converting the data using the scaling, mapping the data or manipulating the data, and then sending to the cloud or to the Node-RED using Modbus TCP IP or HTTP cloud. So capture, convert, distribute, really quick. So I hope you can imagine a lot of application when you have these sensors or the controller, you know, you are converting the sensor to Modbus, which makes it easy to send it to further network, further communication device, or maybe if you want to send it to a data logger, you can also do that. So in this slide, I'm going to show you some model number of the devices which I'm using. So if you find some device interesting for your own projects, you can make a screenshot of this video, of this slide, of this video and you will search this model number on the banner website and you'll find more details about that. Furthermore, you can also check the link. I have put the um, description of the sensors and the link of the sensor in the description of the video. You can click on that and you can get to this device. So this was all for today for this video. Thank you for watching. In the next video, I will be talking about IO-Link devices, how you can move the IO-Link data to the cloud or how you can convert the raw data of the sensors discrete analog into IOLink. So in this video, we saw Modbus. In the next video, we'll talk about IOLink. And for that, you need to subscribe. So subscribe to this channel right now so that you get notification about the new videos to understand how the signal conversion is going on in Industry 4.0. Thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye.